comes to doing something about bullying, I've worn all the hats. I've been on all sides of the fence. I have been a teacher charged with the responsibility of helping my students, whether they be students who've been demonstrating bullying behaviour or whether they are students who've been negatively impacted by the bullying behaviour of others to be able to move past that circumstance, to be able to learn and grow from the experience such that neither of them is likely to have to face that circumstance again. I've certainly also worn the parenting hat. I'm a parent of a couple of wonderful teenagers who I mostly wouldn't return to the store, given the opportunity to do so. And I'm also a school leader. I've been a principal charged with that heavy responsibility of selecting approaches and programs and policy for my school that would allow us to be able to deal with bullying less often, allow us to be able to create a culture where bullying finds it very difficult to thrive. But you know what, the more I think about that whole conversation about hats and which side of the fence we're on, the more I realise that that has often in my career been the first mistake I've made. When I start to think about all of us wearing different hats or all of us being on opposite sides of the fence, what I start to do is I start to position the key players in this circumstance as adversaries, as people who are pitted against each other in some sort of competition, and it's the wrong thing to do. Because what I have learned around bullying is that when we allow the key players to unite, when we allow them to come together in a meaningful and a solutions focused kind of way, they do some pretty incredible stuff. They actually start to create solutions and create better ways of working for the future and they hold each other accountable and support each other to make sure that the actions that they're choosing are making a genuine difference. They're a, they're a really powerful force when they unite around a common goal. So when teachers, when parents, when students and when school leaders come together and make it very clear that the common goal we have for dealing with a bullying situation, even when it's present, even when it's causing trouble for us, is for the behaviour to go away, then all of a sudden we take our focus off who's right and who's wrong and who's to blame and what punishment needs to be handed out. And we put our focus on working together in a very future focused kind of way for the future because we know what we're working towards. We would like the behaviour to go away so that the young people involved have to deal less with the negative impacts of that behaviour. It stands to absolute reason that when we can unite, when we can bring people together, and when parents in particular take the first step of seeing this as a problem that is solvable, that some truly wonderful stuff starts to happen. Divided, we focus on blame. We focus on whose fault it is. We focus on punishment. And we tend to look in the rear view mirror. We look backwards at the situation when we really want to move forwards. And why do we want to move forwards? For the sake of our kids. When we come together, and when parents, teachers, school leaders and when we involve our students, our kids, in the process of working together, we work on fixes. We work on ways of making this situation better. We actually really get to work on understanding what the harm of the situation is because our fixes should be geared at undoing the harm. Of saying, what's the damage here? How is this making people feel? And how can we dissolve that damage in a way that chooses actions that allow us to say, yes, this is taking us forward. So I want to return to that notion, if I may, for just a minute, of the powerful force that can be created when parents, kids, teachers and school leaders work in harmony, work in a united way. When I see that happen, I actually rarely see a bullying situation that they can't overcome. Divided, we fall. United, we stand up and we make a genuine difference. And what happens is you end up with these four key stake stakeholders on the same page. Now it's a nice figurative thing to say that we want to be on the same page when it comes to bullying. But if you can get clear about what's written on that page by working together and then getting better at it by executing over time more effectively, you do a wonderful thing not only for the bullying situation that might be at hand at the moment, but you do a wonderful thing in terms of creating a school community and a school culture where bullying is less likely to be a problem. Mm -hmm.